there are some edible apples in here. Like this is a culinary apple. This is a this is an apple that you would um, bake pies with. Mm -hmm. um, Calvel Blanc de Hill. Mm -hmm. That's French. French. Then? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm using the mirror. You can see. Oh, I'm nice. really digging it. Cooking pies. Oh, yeah. well, cool. Really um, Can they make you a pie? No. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like mirror. <laughs> right next to the apple. <laughs> uh, the cool thing about a lot of these apples is they're all dressed. So, yeah. a lot of them you can see for hundreds of years. Uh, in fact, we'll get down here and I'll show you some apples that uh, uh, Tom Jefferson and Ben Franklin has written about. And it is the apple when you taste it um, because it's just grafted from tree to tree to tree and it's never been a seed. It's never like had any sort of genetic diversity. So when you, when you eat it, it is that apple. Wow. So this is for grafting. So um, you can take rootstock, so the root, the, the bottom side of the tree, um, and cut a, a negative V shape into it. And you take the scion, which is the top. Um, you just cut a branch off any tree. It's usually like um, you usually want a, a branch that's a year old, uh, and you, you cut the um, other side of the V shape into it. Um, you fit the two pieces together, and then just a tool it makes it quick if you're going to do a bunch of them. And then you use a paraffin tape. Um, this is I mean, just to show you, it's pretty much made out of paraffin. Um, and what this does, you, you wrap it up a couple times, and it's, it biodegrades. And so after about two years, it falls off. And by then, the uh, tree has uh, grown its cambium, which is the, you know, the, the green layer of the tree. It's right underneath the bark um, and right on top of the wood. And it grows that together. It grows it together really quick. Like, it'll grow it together in almost two, three weeks if you do it right now. So you want the rootstock to come up high, rootstock wood to come up high enough so that the scion wood, which is the higher wood, never is able to touch the ground. Mm. If it is able to touch the ground, it will put down roots, and that, you know, it will kill off the the bottom part of the root, and this tree will take over, and then you lose all your disease resistance, and you also lose the um, uh, the kind of stunted growth that the rootstock provides, mm -hmm. and you really want the stunted growth. I mean, this tree would be 30 feet tall if it didn't have that rootstock on it. Gotcha. Let's talk about an apple that um, uh, that's very old, and so this is a Nassus rainet, and you can look it up on um, you can look up on Wikipedia. Uh, it's an old apple. It kind of has a lemon taste to it, oh. um, and I've got another apple down here that has a pineapple taste to it. And uh, you know, English is the only language that calls a pineapple a pineapple. It's because back when they discovered pineapples, someone tasted it and was used to this other apple, and was like, oh, it tastes like an apple. Oh, wow. This is an apple grown in the United States, and so no other, uh, no other language uses that term for pineapple. Yeah, these are right. I'm going to try one of these. Try one? Yeah, find, a, find one with the most yellow on it. Most yellow on it. This one looks pretty yellow. There's a spider on it. Should I eat him too? Extra present. Mmm. I get the lemon. Yeah. It's nice. And it kind of looks like a lemon, right? I mean... You said it doesn't taste very good, but I think it tastes great. Yeah, so this one this one tastes, tastes okay. I mean, it's... You would call this an antique apple. You wouldn't necessarily call it a cider apple. And so, um, you know, some of the apples... Well, my strategy here is I, I don't grow apples you can buy at the store. Because mm -hmm. I can just... I can just call up a, a grower in eastern Washington and have them bring in a truck full of apples and just you know, bring them over to the cidery. So there's no use for me to take this kind of real estate on Woodby Island and spend it growing apples that I can grow on real estate that costs a third as much or a fourth as much on the eastern side of the water. So what I grow here is specifically apples that will change the taste of the cider in one way or the other. Mm -hmm. um, the bitter apples um, and these kind of apples that are just you know, so unique. Like if I wanted to add a flavor to a cider, I could use these apples. And then the base cider can just be made out of, um, you know, apples you get, you buy in bulk. Um, or you can buy juice in bulk. Like you can get like, or, like fresh squeezed juice from Eastern Washington and have it come over in a tanker truck. And then oh, wow. you can take the apple juice that you press that has, you know, kind of a high quality and very unique taste and blend it in. Here's a little bit different than apples. Um, so first off, they're heavier. So the last thing you want to do is get hit on the head by a falling pear. <laughs> like they, they sink. In That's fact, why Newton did it with the apple, right? Right, right. So um, if, if you know, the 
the way you can always separate these is just put them in water and all the apples will float and all the pears will sink. Um, okay. Which causes cleaning a little, you know, you have to have two systems for cleaning gotcha. uh, pears and apples. And you don't do bobbing for pears. You would not do bobbing for pears if you get the bottom of the barrel, yeah. That's the good point. Um, but uh, they're very juicy. Um, they, make, they make a good, a good pear wine or a good pear cider. Um, this is the Harrison cider apple. And so before Prohibition, uh, this apple was uh, one of the key ingredients to American cider. Like this, this was the the kind of the apple that made cider the number one drink. Like before Prohibition, it wasn't beer, it wasn't wine. Everyone drank cider. Most people drank cider. It was a lot more common to cider. Um, and when they when Prohibition came, they tried to wipe out a beers and cider apple. In addition to banning alcohol, they actually went on the people's property without compensation cut down all the Harrison cider apples. And so wow. they went across the, like, there's an old black and white photo of this massive mountain of apples. Um, and it's in a lot of history books, in, like high school. And a lot of people probably saw that and went, why, why let all those apples go to waste? I talked about an unedible apple. This apple is horrible to eat. It is, the juice is super thick. Um, it's very, very bitter. It can only be used in cider. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was part of the reasoning that the government used to go out and wipe out all of these apples. Um, to and make it so that people would stop making alcohol because alcohol is illegal. So this is right. an apple that is pretty much useless except for making cider. Right, right. Gotcha. And uh, they did a really good job because uh, they thought to have wiped it completely off the face of the earth until uh, 1990, it was 1990s. Uh, someone was uh, going to take down a barn and this, the guy who owned the barn said, well, that's a you know, Harrison cider apple. I think it was the last one in the world. And he was like, well, wait a minute, um, like, I'm going to go, and so he got in touch with someone at Cornell University, and ended up taking graphs off of it, and Cornell uh, grafted it on the new sign on, and grew a few of these trees. There was no way to verify that it was actually the Harrison Cider Apple. Um, but, uh, what they did, there, there's a book called uh, The Apples of New York, where they have, like, pictures and descriptions of the flavor of the juice of all apples, and it was written in, like, 1900, in the turn of the century. So they did have a description of the apple, and that had, had one but there was no way to actually tell that this was the real, the real tree. And then in the early 2000s, uh, a different farmer in another part of the country said, hey, I got a Harrison cider apple. It's been here for 100 years. And so they, Cornell went down and actually took samples of that tree, genetically tested them. They were exactly the same. Stories corroborated. Um, and then uh, Cornell University gave the apple cuttings to five different nurseries. One of them was Cummings Nursery in Ithaca, New York. And so that's this whole row is... Uh, the Harrison cider apple. So, some of the That's apple juice in there is from the Harrison cider apple before, before prohibition. Wow. You said it's completely inedible. It that juice is horrible. Yeah. So I shouldn't taste one. Well, you should not taste one. You, you can give it a try. Actually, these ones are uh, get ripe a little later on. <clears throat> uh, these ones will be ripe when there's no no green on them. Oh, so it's too early to see how horrible it is. Yeah. That's a shame. I can find another apple for you. Okay. Yeah. I want to try your most horrible apple, Ryan. Okay. <laughs> Game on. This is the what strongest. <laughs> this is the strongest tannin apple that I have. Um, little apple. Um, I would say if you were making a cider to drink, you'd put about five percent of this in if you wanted it to be lightly bitter, kind of like what you're drinking right mm -hmm. now. Um, you can taste that. Right. So it's going to be like um, eating a hot chili pepper or something, like in a in a bitter way. Bitter way. It's a really interesting texture. Have you been now, on that one? Yeah, a lot. Yeah. But before that, though, <laughs> I get a hint of like almost like hot and candy sweets, and then it just goes immediately bitter. Yeah, it's a bittersweet. So mm -hmm. um, apples fall in four categories. Bittersweet is one of the categories. It's pretty good. But I'm weird. I bet if Marina took a bite, you wouldn't like it. <laughs> it's like people who chew up vitamin C and go, this isn't that sour. You know? I, that's what I think. <laughs> it's kinda, I eat those pills like every that. day. <laughs> I mean, but it definitely, I get the tan in my mouth. Like, yeah. my whole mouth is dry. Like, you want to try it? Oh my god. <laughs> I wish you could see her face. <laughs> mm. <laughs> it's a 
good tree. It's really hard to get this tree. I've, it's I've crazy all the eclectic knowledge you have to have to maintain this variety of apples, and that's yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you know, and you know, some of this isn't really set up to be a commercial orchard. Like you, I, at some point in the future, I would almost have to take a lot of it down and then set it up. But it is set up almost as a as a science experiment, mm -hmm. so that I can understand like. You know what grows well here, what doesn't grow well here, what uh, what tastes good, what what adds to cider, what's what's easy to process. Mm -hmm. um, you know the fact that you know some apples are really small. I would I wouldn't think that those would be bad apples to grow until I have to go out and pick a bear a bush of them. You know, mm -hmm. and then it's like, oh my god, this is horrible. Like, what am I gonna? You know, how how, how am I ever gonna? Yeah. You know, do this on any sort of scale. You can't, exactly. So, you, know, you just gotta you gotta experiment. And some of some of the apples, uh, actually the crab apples. And the Hughes crab that we looked at earlier, uh, when they flower, like that, there's like a, you know, sometimes look, there's like perfumes that say apple blossom. You're like, mm -hmm. if you have apple tree, you're like, it, apple blossoms don't smell anything. Those ones really smell like, mm -hmm. it smells like perfume when you walk the orchard or blossom. So you're starting a perfume business? <laughs> yeah, I've got a, I've got a still to <laughs> isolate. Just that. Right? I wish I had a, uh, a knife. I have one. Do you? Tell me if you've ever seen an apple like that. A lot of people think it's a plum. It looks like a plum. Oh, right. Yeah, they're so genetically diverse wow. that yeah. you can actually get apples that are red inside. And so, what this does is it adds color to the cider. Um, oh. And so, a lot of um, you know, a lot of companies will add caramel. I just put these in. These uh, we talked about crab apples earlier. This yeah. is another crab apple. Um, and um, it's actually got two names. It's the Virgin Crab, uh, Virginia Crab, <clears throat> um, Hughes. And it's also called the Hughes Apple, <clears throat> and it uh, it produces really good cider, like yeah. really good cider. Um, and the, the apples aren't too small to you know spend all day picking. Yeah. Are you gonna get rained on here? Yeah, we might have to wrap up this orchard tour and get inside. <laughs>